outliers are specific data points that differ significantly from the rest of the data. So they are basically abnormal data points. For example, you take this picture, you have two, two features, you have an X and you have a Y variable and you have all these data points that follow a specific pattern. This is obviously this made up data, but outliers are those data points that do not follow the pattern. For example, this one that is way outside of what, would, what you would expect the regular data points to follow. If you have data points around here in this, this kind of regions, those you can consider as outliers. So now why are we even concerned with outliers? If you have outliers in your data and you are trying to fit a machine learning model on top of that, for example, take this particular data set, you have speed on the x-axis and you have the distance traveled on the y-axis. This data by the way is a result of various car experiments where the cars are traveling at certain speeds and suddenly full brake is applied. On applying that brake, how long the car travels to come to a complete stop? That is the distance that is measured along the y-axis. All right. So you have this data, now you have all the regular data points over here and you have few outlier data points over here. All right. Now in the presence of the outliers, ideally you would expect the relationship that the machine learning model to learn to be of this kind of a slope. In the absence of these outliers, the regular relationship that you are, you are observing here is of this kind of a slope. Right. But in the presence of these outlier data points, which may or may not be true. Right. This may be legitimate data points, this could be legit, it could not be legit also, right? That does not matter right now. But in the presence of these outliers, the shape of the slope of this line itself changes. So this kind of distorts the true relationship that the machine learning models learn. Now another point we need to consider is, once you detect the outliers, do we always need to treat them? It depends. Now if the outliers are legitimate data points and you want and you want your machine learning algorithm to sort of explain or be able to predict the outlier data points also. In such a case, you want to have the outlier data points also in the data set because you want to predict such observation. However, if such outliers, for example, in this case, these are outlier data points I would never expect to happen and I do not want the algorithm to make such a prediction over here. For example, if the speed is over, over this value, so this is around 17 or 18, if the speed was around this value, I will want my machine learning algorithm to predict a value that is around over here in this region, not all the way to 200, 200 meters or so. So in such case, I am better off removing these outliers rather than retaining them in the model. So the next step is how do we even detect the outliers? There are various different approaches. One of the most common approach is to use what is called the box and the viscous plot, simply called as the box plot. Using box plot, if you simply draw a block box plot, the box plot itself, those points that lies around the viscous region of the box plot, so you have a top maximum whisker and a minimum whisker, those points that lie outside of these whiskers are generally considered as outliers. But in order to understand what these whiskers are, you need to also understand what this box plot actually represents. Let us say you have a particular data, for example, say the electricity consumption of a certain city throughout the year, on every day of the given year. All right? Now from this data, so electricity, electricity consumption, you have various data points present, right? So you have all this data, you have all this data, from this data, you compute the median, the 25th percentile, the 20, the 75th percentile, all right? By computing these three values, you will be able to mark the median, the 25th percentile or the first quartile and the 75th percentile here or also called as the third quartile, you will be able to get these data points. Now this lower end of the whisker is nothing but 1.5 times the IQR, IQR, IQR is nothing but the distance between, the difference between the third quartile and the first quartile is nothing but the IQR, right? this distance. 1.5 times the IQR is nothing but this distance. This is not in scale, likewise this distance is 1.5 times the IQR from this data point, from this third quartile, right? Using that you can get the viscous. All those data points in this data that lie outside the viscous, either the top, it could be very high electricity consumption or it could be very low electricity consumption, it will go in the very bottom, bottom part here. So such extreme data points are generally considered as either extreme values or simply as outliers. So this is the entire logic behind how to find the outliers using box and viscous plot. Let us 
see how to do this in python using code. So here we are importing matplotlib.py plot as plt, seaborn package as sns, we are also importing load boson but we will not be using this data set, instead we will be using the churn modeling data set that we are, we are currently working on. I will leave a description, I will leave the link to that data set in the description, you can download it from there and use that data directly. Also matplotlib inline to make the plots coming up, to make the plots to come up in Jupyter notebook. So this is not the data, we will be using the churn modeling data set that we have been working with. So this is the data, at the end we will have a column called exit and that is what we are, we are trying to predict at the end of the day. So we have the exited column here, we also have some feature scaled values, ignore these two columns, we are not going to use this right now. Assume the data is going to be present till this particular column, exited column, alright. So with this data, we are going to draw the box plots for each of the data, each of the columns present in this data set, right from, right from the numeric columns, input numeric columns include columns such as the credit score, age, tenure, these kind of columns are, the, are all the input numeric columns. So we will iterate through them and draw the box plots. You can see here the credit score, there are few observations that is outside the whiskers. These are all, these are all the different outliers. Likewise, we have outliers for age, we have, we do not have any outliers for tenure, unfortunately, nothing, unfo nothing unfortunate about it, but yeah, we do not have any outliers here. Then balance also no outliers, number of products, we seem to have one outlier which is 4. Then we have the estimated salary, no outliers here also. So, so the inference is quite straightforward, we are, we are able to see outliers in the number of products, age and credit score, only these three columns seem to have any type of outliers. Now this is visually identifying the outliers using box plot, but this is not enough, we want to extract the exact rows or the data points that are actually outliers. We can do that using, okay, first we will see the box plot method of seeing it, looking at it side by side and then we will look at it, look at how to do that using IQR scores. So here in this method, we plot the box plot by keeping exited equal to 0 and exited equal to 1. So two different box plots. So these are all the observations, the blue ones, these are all the observations that has exited value. This is the response that we are trying to predict, all right. Exited equal to 0 and exited equal to 1, we, we bifurcate the data into 2 and for both of those two groups, we are finding if there are any outliers or not. This is just one, met, one other finer way of looking for outliers. Likewise for the next variable which is number of products, we still have some, we have an outlier over here, this is number of products column, so we have an outlier, likewise for, for age, we still have an outlier when exited equal to 1, right, we have couple of, I don't know how many outliers but there seems to be some outliers over here. This is visually understanding it, now let us try to extract or get the exact records from the data that are actually outliers, this we can do using the IQR approach. So box plot itself identifies outliers using IQR score only, interquartile range, interquartile quartile range. Using this, box plot is able to identify the outliers. Now any, any value that is more than this value, right, so in the box plot, we have the box plot here. So this is, this is Q3, this is Q3, this is just Q3, we know how to compute Q3 which is nothing but the 75th percentile, Ra? yeah. So any value that is greater than 75th percentile plus 1.5 times IQR or any value that is lower than Q1, this is Q1 minus 1.5 times IQR, so any value that lies left hand side of this or to the right hand side of this are considered as outliers. We can do it programmatically using code, very straightforward data. So first we will select the data. So this is taken from a template code that was using the Boston DF data set. So we are applying the same code to do it on the credit score data set, right. So get the specific column for which you want to get the outliers, store it as data, sort it out. This is, this is actually optional. So from there, we are extracting the Q1, which is nothing but the first quartile or 25th percentile. 25th percentile, the 75th percentile and the median is Q2, 50th percentile. So we are getting these values 
and compute the IQR which is nothing but Q3 minus Q1. In this case, this stands at for the credit score data, it stands at 134, all right. Now all the values, now if you plot this, this is how it looks. These are the outliers, you have outliers in the bottom part. Now all those records, all those records that lie below the lower limit or above the upper limit, where the lower limit is nothing but Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR and upper limit is nothing but Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR. So any, any data point that is below the lower or above the upper limit are considered as outliers. So those data points that qualify for the upper limit rule, right? So there are no data points that are above the upper limit, but there are a good number of data points that are below the lower limit. The, low, the lower limit is 383. There are a good number of data points that are below the lower limit, right? So this is, this is the below data points that are below the lower limit because we have lesser than sign and above the upper limit we have here in upper limit outliers. Alright, so that is how we are extracting these outliers. These two, these two arrays are containing the upper and lower limit outliers. Now once we have identified the outliers, you can simply replace them. Right, to, to treat them, you can simply replace them. All the data points that are below the lower limit, you can replace all those data points with the lower limit itself. This is what we call as capping, capping the outliers. Right? The data points that are below the lower limit, we replace with lower limit. Those above the upper limit, we replace them with the upper limit. Upper limit. We are not going to be running this code because we will still be, we are going to be using this data set for the next approach, which is computing or extracting the outliers using the Z score. Let's get on with it.